Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today is Election Day Market Volatility. As we start through this week, as everyone knows, this Tuesday we have Election Day. Uh, it's going to be an eventful uh, week. And as someone who's been in this industry for 38 years, I just want to say to each and every one of you that regardless of what the outcome of the election is, your party wins, your party loses, your candidate wins, your candidate loses, then that 38 years I've seen this country continue to move forward due to innovation, determination, and uh, the American spirit. So as we get into this week in discussion, we wanted to talk about how the markets have reacted in relation to the elections. Because I've seen Democrats win, I've seen Republicans win, and industry continues to move forward regardless of what's taking place uh, in Washington, D.C. Also, let me just remind you that today is November 2nd, and guess what? In 60 days, we will be in January of 2021. So a lot's going on, a lot's got to take place, and we're going to keep you updated through all of this. So Bobby Norman, you join me uh, in this morning's meeting along with our other distinguished colleagues, Adam Van Zant and Trey Booth. And we had some great dialogue uh, in regards to things that people need to be watching, not only on Election Day, but also for the rest of the week and the rest of the month. So with that said, Bobby, why don't you jump in here and go on and address the whole market conditions and how markets have reacted before. Yes, Greg. So Election Week is finally here. Uh, and without having a crystal ball or without picking sides, I want to answer two most common questions we've been getting from clients over the past couple of weeks regarding the election. Uh, probably the most uh, the common question we've gotten is, how, how will the markets react if the election results aren't decided for a few days or even a few weeks? And so just, Great look, question. just looking back in history, we know that in 2000 with Bush Gore, we didn't know the election results for five weeks. And we saw the S&P 500 fall 7.8% from Election Day 2000 through the end of the year. And so uh, we've actually, there's some little bit of comparison here. And then 2000, we were actually going through the dot-com bubble where the technology stocks were trading back. And then this year, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So at the end of the day, you know, it's now more than ever uh, more important to have a diversified strategy in our portfolios, which we do. So second question we've been getting is, how will the market perform if we see a blue wave or the Democrats take control of the White House and control of the Senate while holding the House? And we know that throughout history, on average, the market performs better with divided government. So we'll see yes. what happens. But throughout, throughout it all, uh, if you have questions, please call us. We want to answer questions you have in a week like this where there's a lot of uncertainty. Bobby, that is great insight. and appreciate you sharing that with us, uh, especially emphasizing uh, uh, if you have a sweep of one party versus, uh, as we like to say, a house divided there. So uh, with that, Trey, you also, though, gave insight. Uh, we've had clients asking questions, and I think uh, what you brought up, one client had asked about in terms of earnings and, and markets and everything is very insightful. Share that with us. Yeah, so uh, l last week's vlog, we, we mentioned there was a lot of data points coming out over the next eight days from last Monday that outside of the election would have a large impact going forward. And so I just kind of wanted to review some of those data points now that they're in. We've had several clients ask us, okay, I know what you're looking for, but what happened? And it, it's very important to not only look forward, but also know what has occurred when we think these big events are happening. So one of the big topics we wanted to look at was earnings. Uh, earnings came in strong last week. We said they were the five most important companies in terms of size were reporting last week, and it was going to be important to watch and see how they did. Well, they all beat estimates, and that's kind of what we're seeing is the theme. 319 of the S&P 500, that's the 500 largest publicly traded company have, companies, have reported third quarter results, and 86% of them are beating estimates. Now, these are low estimates. There's still a year-over-year -year drop in earnings around 10%, but we came into this expecting a 20, 16 to 20% drop in earnings. So 10% drop is really, really fantastic. And so why is this important? It's because the, regardless of the election, whoever wins is going to have to be inheriting an economy and a stock market with corporations that are earning money. This is the long term. And so these corporations earning money, doing well, is, is almost more important. The fact that the stock market dropped in the face of this good, these good reports is likely a sign that there could be upside potential. Uh, if, if all this good news, once people start stop looking at the election and look under the hood and realize that companies 
are coming back from what was a very deep recession. We saw that with GDP. GDP came out 33% annualized growth rate, beat ex ex expectations, and jobless rate came out, which is which comes out each week. It is an important data point we watch because it's so timely because it comes out weekly. Came in, it was 751,000 jobless claims. Now, that's a large number, but it's down from 791,000 the week before. So there's some positive news if we kind of can, can get through this election noise. Hopefully that once we're past this, whoever wins, whatever, whatever party is in power, we want them to inherit a strong stock market, a strong economy, and something we, this is what we're looking at when we're looking at future, making future investments. And, and, and Trey, you used a great term there, election noise, from the standpoint that the noise can cause the volatility, but at the end of the day, if companies are making money, unemployment's going down, uh, all of those things uh, in some ways have a bigger impact on our economy, our portfolios, and our lives than um, the election itself. You agree with me on that? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So keep that in mind as we continue to move forward through this year and into 2021. And then Adam, you have been great to keep us uh, informed on the technical analysis, what people need to be watching in regards to the markets in relation to the election. And then also from the standpoint of, of seeing how we navigate through this volatility. So with that, we're finally here, sir. Election day is upon us. Give us your insight on that. Thanks, Greg. And like you said, you know, no guarantees, but on August 3rd, we had an S&P level of 3294. So that's 90 days out from the election. Yes. And this has kind of been an indicator of who's going to win. So your incumbent party being Trump, if it's above that 3294 level, would historically keep the House. And that's based off of 1984 up till this date. Uh, right. That has been the case. Yeah, I think since I think since 1984, it's been 100 percent correct, and since 1928, that particular indicator has been 87 percent correct. That's correct, and only three times has that not been the case, uh, dating back to the numbers you're giving us. So Friday's close came in at 32.70. Um, we're now looking at a resistance level of 33.60, with a support level of 3,200. Okay. So, once again, we're kind of, you know, hovering around that 3300 range, as you can see with that 3294 number. And also, Greg, you know, uh, Bobby kind of mentioned earlier that we might not see a winner for, you know, up to a certain amount of weeks. I want to point out that the Masters is coming up uh, mid-month. So we might, in fact, have a Masters winner named before a president. That's true. Very true. Good insight there. It puts it in perspective. So, but from the standpoint, this isn't the first time historically we've, we've had a delay in finding out who the president's going to be. Uh, also, a, a, a delay in which party may dominate in the House or the Senate. So, uh, it is historical times, but at the same time, as we've often said uh, in the quote of Mark Twain, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. So, we're going to be taking historical data, we're going to be taking technical indicators, of uh, which, as I like to say, is like tracking the patient's heart rate. And then we're going to take the fundamentals of corporate earnings, as Trey talked about, and, and what's actually happening in the economy. And we're going to be watching this to understand where we go for the next 60 days and into next year. As Bobby Norman clearly stated, nobody's got a crystal ball, but we're going to do our very best to figure out where the direction, the trends are going to go. And we also know from the standpoint that with innovation, there will be new opportunities regardless. So we hope you have a great week. Uh, please vote. Uh, we will be keeping you updated through, again, not only these vlogs, uh, the phone conversations, the Zoom meetings, the one-on-ones, the -on also in terms of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the different ways we can communicate with you. And again, thank you so much for sharing uh, our vlog with others. That's been a huge compliment and it's made a lot of introductions for us and we thank each and every one of you for doing that. Have a great week and we'll look forward to uh, talking about uh, election results and markets uh, in the coming days. Thanks.